Hey, Austin Gill here. And if you're anything like me, you have certainly noticed the massive boom in AI technology. And you have to acknowledge that it is going to bring a disruptive shift to not just software engineering, but every industry. They're coming for us. Just kidding. So I recently dove in and tried to get a better understanding of what these tools are and how they work and decided that it would be a good idea to create a tutorial series specifically for web developers to learn about how to incorporate AI technology into the apps that we're building. Now, it wasn't good enough for me to just stay on one hype train, so I'm actually going to be focusing on two by building an application using QuickJS. A quick is a JavaScript framework that is built around this concept of resumability, which we are going to get into. But that said, I do want this, uh, I do want the topics in this series to be applicable regardless what your framework or tool chain is. So I'm going to be focusing on keeping the quick stuff specific to quick and building everything else in a more fundamental and generic purpose. That way you can take these concepts and code and apply them into your application. Here's a little sneak preview. Uh, I thought it would be cool to have an AI bot that kind of uh, takes two opponents and tells me which one would uh, hypothetically win if they got in a fight. So we've got this little uh, random dice thing that can pre-fill uh, the boxes and then I can ask it to tell me the answer. And of course it's gonna do this sort of type ahead feature where it kind of gives us some sort of description about what's going on and who would fight and who would win and why. And then it gets to the end, it tells us who the winner is. And then we also have this other little button that we can click and it kind of generates this sort of spinner. And after a little bit of time, cool, generates some weird AI image for us that for the most part, doesn't look great, but it's kind of fun and quirky and interesting. So I hope all that sounds fun and you are excited to get started because in this first video, we are mostly going to be focusing on boilerplate. Okay, before we can start building anything, we will have to cover a couple of prerequisites. Quick is a JavaScript framework, so you will have to have Node.js installed on your machine. You don't have to have the most recent version, uh, although that wouldn't be a bad idea, but as long as you have something relatively recent, you should be good to go. I'll probably be using uh, Node 20, but it should work back to uh, some older versions. Next, you're also going to want to head over to openai.com and sign up for an account. This is going to be the API that provides AI services to incorporate into our application. Now, by the end of the series, I'm also going to show you how to deploy your application to a standard VPS. Now, I'm going to be using Akamai's Cloud Computing Services, which is formerly uh, Linode, but the same steps should apply uh, regardless. So if you have one in mind, fine, but if you don't already have a cloud computing service uh, to work with, then I'd encourage you to go to linode.com forward slash, and then you can go to Austin Gill, and that should give you $100 in free credits. So you can sign up today and get comfortable with the backend, or you can sign up at the end of the series, or if you wanna use a different VPS provider, you can do that as well. Okay, so assuming we have all of those prerequisites out of the way, uh, we're going to head to uh, quickqwik.builder.io to get started. And they have a handy little uh, start script there. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna plug that into our terminal. So I'm gonna go into my code repository and I'm just going to paste that there. And this is a quick CLI that's going to help us bootstrap our application. So it's gonna ask us what directory to put it in. I'm gonna put mine in a folder called Versus. That'll make more sense later. And I'm going to start mine with just an empty app. And then uh, sure, it can install the dependencies. It can uh, instantiate a new Git repository. And yes, I would love to hear a joke. Knock, knock, who's there? Opportunity? That is impossible. Opportunity doesn't come knocking twice. <laughs> Okay, so now I can get into my versus folder and next I'm going to open up my code editor and see what we got. Okay, great. So this is what our quick app looks like to begin with. And inside of here, we've got a source folder. This is where all of the business logic is going to happen. Uh, we also have some TS config. We've got a Vite config. I'm going to go ahead and modify my TS config. Uh, for any of you that don't prefer using TypeScript, I'm going to go ahead and set uh, check.js so we can also be writing 
in JavaScript, but still get all of the same benefits as having TypeScript. And yeah, inside of this uh, source folder is where all of our work's gonna happen. We have a components folder, which is pretty familiar for a lot of standard or modern JavaScript frameworks. That's where your individual component uh, will go for component-driven uh, building. And then we also have a routes folder. Now this is the folder that Quick uses to generate different pages. Quick uses uh, folder-based routing. So we can see that inside of all the routes, uh, we'll have the home route will be represented by this index file, and then any other subsequent uh, folders inside of there will represent their respective pages. The other file worth mentioning here is this root.tsx file. This is the base root component that represents essentially the root of the DOM. So if you ever need to do anything there, uh, this is the file to work with. So let's get started with npm run dev and just see what we're sort of working with as this base application. You can see that uh, the application is running at localhost 5173. So I can copy that and paste it here. And we can see we have a pretty basic app. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on styling in this tutorial, so I'm just going to lean for something that's nice and easy. And I'm going to run a npm run a quick add. Now, this is also going to use the quick CLI to give me a lot of different options to choose from for adding plugins. And I'm going to go ahead and reach for the Tailwind plugin. It's going to prompt me with some of the changes that I was going to make and make sure that everything looks good. And I say, yep, nope, yep, nope. Uh, yeah, everything looks good. So now if we go into our dev mode again and we open up the application, we can see that it looks a little bit different than it did. And that's because uh, the Tailwind styles have been applied with a complete reset. And we should be able to open up our index TSX file and say something like class equals, uh, what is it, text, uh, I don't know, for Excel. Now, if we look at that, we can see, yep, we got the big text. We've verified that Tailwind classes are working. Okay, now another sort of optional thing that I'm going to do that you, you can totally skip out on is I'm gonna go to uh, my GitHub repo, this utils folder project, which is essentially a collection of just uh, copy and paste utilities that I keep around. I'm gonna go into the CSS and I'm going to grab this theme file because I like to have a uh, kind of a silly look in my projects. So I'm gonna copy all that, close that and go into my global CSS file, which we can see has been modified thanks to that quick CLI and I'm going to get rid of these styles that I don't think I need and paste in the ones that uh, I copied. So now if we look at our application, much better, very cool. And a nice little feature here is uh, I can actually see that this works for both light mode and dark mode. Pretty cool. Okay, now I'm also going to do a little bit of work just to make sure that our app is in a good starting point before we dig in. And I'm going to close that and open up this index file. I'm going to replace this and this with a main tag. I totally put that in the wrong spot. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of center this a bit. I'll give this class equals, we're going to give it a max width of 4XL. We're going to give it some uh, horizontal auto, auto margin and a little bit of padding four, please. And then uh, I don't think we're gonna need that. We can leave the H1, that's fine for now. Uh, cool, if I did that correctly, yeah, we can see the app is kind of more centered and has a maximum width and that should be an okay starting point. Okay, now, as I said, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of coding today, but there is one very important thing that I wanna cover, and that is uh, in this project, I'm going to have a folder called stages. And this is going to serve as a nice checkpoint for the end of each video series. So what we'll do is essentially have a folder in here called, uh, we'll just call it stage one. So at the end of this video, the code that's in here will match or will be the source folder 
uh, that we get to by the end of this. So anything that if you need if you need to go back and sort of restart or get your code back in the same place to match what my code is my code is or was at the end of any video, uh, you can copy the contents from any of these stages into the source folder, and that's the idea to get you back on track easily. So what we'll do is actually, I guess I'll take all of this and copy that and just put it in there. There you go, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, once again, if you ever get yourself into a place where uh, your app is no longer working, go to the stage that you began the video that you're on and just copy the contents into the source folder and you can just, uh, you can even just delete it and just drag it and rename it. Okay, and for all that to work, we need to actually, uh, put this code somewhere that you can reach it. So I'm gonna commit this with, uh, sure hope this works. Going to publish this branch, the project's called Versus. Uh, we're gonna make this a public repository. And so now if we go to GitHub slash Austin Gill slash Versus, uh, you should be able to find it. And <laughs> it's looking pretty good. And yeah, once again, if you need to reset at any point, uh, go ahead and go into stages and into the stage that you want to reset from uh, and copy the contents into the source folder. Okay, I think that's all I wanna to cover today. Again, this video was mostly focused on getting the boilerplate sort of out of the way so that in the next video, we can focus on actually integrating some AI into our project. Now, with that in mind, I would encourage you to take a moment and play around with some AI app ideas that you might have because you'll see that a lot of the work we're going to focus on is not actually writing code, but working on getting AI sort of incorporated. So I think it would be fun if you bring your own spin and it should work just fine with whatever we're going to build. Now, if you don't have any ideas in mind, that's okay. Uh, we're going to be working on an app that I thought of that I thought would be cool and should be just as fun. So with all that, I hope that you are excited for this course. If you have any comments or concerns or questions, please throw them in the comment section below. And please remember to hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified when the next video comes out. Catch you next time.